The backyard rink. It's more than a place to skate. Childhood dreams of hockey and figure skating greatness soar here. Every stride ever taken on this frozen patch warmly lingers in our memories. This was a good place to be. It still is. It doesn't take a fancy change room. The stairwell's just fine, as long as Dad and Mom are there to get the skates good and tight. Some packed snow and a few heavy soakings set the stage. Add smiling faces and eager gliders, and the backyard rink comes alive. I kind of would think of myself as an ice farmer. I, I, I have an affinity with farmers now because I plant my crop, the crop being the rink, and I tend it through the good times and the bad times, and the crop is the uh, people that you get out on the rink. And this year I've come through two thaws, but we still have a rink, so I'm doing pretty well. They call Don's rink. The Don Dome. And the Don Dome, like all great rinks, not only creates memories, it brings them back. My father always had the backyard rinks in North Bay, Kingston, and Ottawa. Wherever we lived, there was always a consistency to the backyard rink, and uh, it's just part of the Canadian winter as far as I'm concerned. I figure it's a way to solidify my place in immortality, that no matter what I do as a father, no matter what my failures are, 25 years, my kids will say, oh, I remember the year he put in the rink and he stood out in the backyard freezing every night. And that's what people remember about their dads more than anything else. In our region, we are blessed with numerous natural skating surfaces. Those living on the banks of the Ottawa River can easily access one of the biggest backyard rinks around. But for some, it's not as simple as cleaning snow off a frozen river, lake, or pond. Their rinks take planning, dedication, and hard work. It's all part of being in Canada, I guess. When the Waters and Millikens moved into their newly built Dunrobin homes last fall, one of the first orders of business was clearing 50 or more trees to make room for a shared backyard rink crafted here in the forest. We always want an outdoor rink, we just want it a little bit different, that's all. It's so big. It's the biggest rink in the neighborhood. <laughs> the outdoor rinks are where the kids have fun. Uh, sometimes minor hockey's getting too serious these days. So this is where the kids, uh, I think, learn to play hockey the best and they have the most fun. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, no pressures from other parents or anything else. Uh, nobody's watching you doing things just perfect. It's uh, <clears throat> do it at will as you please, you know. Everybody set, the goalie's set. Y'all set, Fergie? Fergie's set. Biff, you ready? Get two hands on the stick. Watch the sticks, boys. Game time! Hockey night in Canada, go! When I was a young lad, there was a neighbor who put a rink in our backyard through two fences, and it was a big rink, and uh, I remembered it well, and I just want my kids to have good memories, too. I think that's what being a child is all about, having good memories. Yeah! Jim LaPointe's okay. backyard rink in Canada in is Canada. a three-year-old tradition and has evolved from a simple patch of frozen water to an 80-foot-long, bright, colorful playground, complete with lights and blue lines. I went and got some crepe paper uh, that you'd use as streamers, I guess, and uh, we rolled it out and took a sponge and iced it. And there was enough ice to freeze right away. It was a good night that night, and then we just flooded it over top, and. Those, are the, those lines have been put on since New Year's Day and they've lasted through the rain and everything else, so it worked out good this year. But not all backyard rinks are outdoors. Take Jack Pryor's, for instance. In the world of backyard rinks, this one in West Carleton reigns supreme. This was once a tired old shed with a dirt floor. Now it's a young hockey player's paradise, where NHL dreams of the future are carved out here on the ice. OK, let's go. Jack Pryor has made it easy to forget you were in a backyard rink. His change room has benches, carpet, even a toasty propane heater. Here you go, buddy. This is our arena of dreams, right? 
I looked at this one summer and I said, hey, you know, why don't I, it's a little small, but let's just give it a try. And uh, it worked out so well last year that uh, we enlarged it this year and uh, we're very pleased with it so far. It looks great. It was built for games of shinny, but it's become a popular training spot for the West Carlton Warriors, who with Jack's blessings, pick up a little extra practice time here each week. And why not? It's got all the trimmings of a real arena. It's appearing on some of the hockey schedules as the prior palladium, but uh, I don't know if that'll stick or not. The ice here is a foot thick, flooded early in the season with a fire hose in the rafters and cooled by a giant fan. I used to flood it from the ground and what I ended up with was holes in the ice. So I went up from the ceiling and it spreads it out over top of the ice. That way there you don't have any wear on the ice and it's a nice smooth surface after it's flooded. Eh? And there's no standing around with a hose for these guys. The prior palladium even has its own Zamboni. You don't drive it, you push it, but it does the job. So what's the best part about a backyard rink? For some, it's the freedom to skate when you want, how you want, to see your breath in the crisp winter air. For mom and dad, it's a chance to watch their kids laugh and play and dream. But perhaps the best part for all of us is that long after the spring comes, the backyard rink never goes away. The ice may melt, but thankfully, the memories don't.